Welcome back to You Can Do It. This is our third video in the series on the MITA2U dial caliper. Today we're just going to look at the needle fluctuation um, and servicing the backlash or preload on the gears. Let's get going. Okay, look, working beautifully. I've got that cap on, clipped it on, I've put this back on. However, this is what a lot of the problems with these dial gauges. People clean them, put them back like I've done. And look, this actually works fine, I've checked it. But the one problem is, look at this. One minute it's at zero. And do it again, it's a little bit more. Look, now it's gone the other way. Now it's over there. And it's zero, it's over there. Zero, there, 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 there. So what that's all about is the preload. So we've put it all back together, but it's not been preloaded. In order to preload it, because of the because of those little tiny gears in there, the way they all work, those those gears have um, any slack, which there will obviously has to be a bit of tolerance in there. Any slack would mean that the dial could move, even though that the gate these calipers are not moving. So therefore, they designed a system where it's preloaded by the other gear that's always under a slight bit of tension to so preload that dial so the dial doesn't jump around. So we have to take this all apart again and preload the gear. I had a lot of problems when I was putting this in and I did actually have to take the whole innards apart. Um, and there's a little clock spring in there on one of the gears and the way the gear transmits its its rotation, the small pinion gear transfers its, its, its rotation to the to the bigger brass gear is with the clock spring. So the clock spring is always under some sort of tension. And obviously when you take that, um, when you take the innards out, that tension then goes. So we're gonna have to go back in and uh, retension that. So follow me to do that. I'll, I'll quickly do what we've, we've already done. I'll take this off and the dial off and I'll get us back to where we were. Okay, we've got back to this stage. So then I'm gonna undo these two larger ones and we'll take that because this is the gear here that we need to preload this one here we can't do that obviously because the gears are all located in the rack at the moment so we're going to have to take that out of the rack and we'll have to work out some way of doing that so stay with to me preload look is to take away that slack in the gears so there's this slack at the moment and we need to just take that away Obviously, that means the dial will be moving fractionally, which is what you're seeing when you, you close it. And sometimes the dial is there, sometimes it's down there, so that would be different movements in the dial. As well, look, you see, if I leave that there, it stays there. If I leave that there, it stays there, and it should be preloaded, so it... Okay, so this preload look, if you look, you've got a wheel here, a little wheel that's sprung, you see? And what we need to do is put a bit of preload on that to take out the backlash in the gears. So what I'm going to do is find, you can see that, find, find where it just starts to pull. Find where it starts to pull there. And then I'm going to put my toothpick in there and I'm going to just say do quarter of a turn it's through that hole and then through that uh, the preload wheel and it's locked it there so if I want to put more preload I'd move it round a, a hole um, clockwise if I want to put less of a preload I'll move it anti-clockwise so that just shows you how all that that works so I'm going to just um, play around with this until I get the right setting that I need to. At the moment I've done quarter, so at the moment it's set at quarter. I've done that quarter of a turn and I'm going to put my toothpick in there. Right, so that's now preloaded and you can see because there's a bit of on the toothpick. If I do that, look, the toothpick tries to twist, right? So then we need to make sure the toothpick is round about eight o'clock and then we can put that back in gently and we'll screw it and then we can take the toothpick out. So I'm going to put one screw in here with my big fingers, put the other one in here, 
like that. Make sure that's uh, make sure that's seated in there. A little bit of movement in here as well, so just just do them up. Put that back in and tighten that up. And look, if I my screw, look, yeah, look, it's still got preload on it. You can see because because the hole is here is in front of the cog and it's below the the rack. So it's still got preload. So now I can actually pull that out and the preload should be stuck because the, the gears are stuck in the track. So let me just try and do that. Preload is, when we take that out, oh, there's no movement. So this should, yeah, that spins all right. That is preloaded now onto the cord of the turn. So when we check, if we like, see now, we get that hole there, look. Yeah, look, you see? Got preload on it. You can see on the camera there, look. If I move it, it moves straight away back by itself. So it's got preloaded. So your needle shouldn't, that means that the needle is going to be preloaded as well. So that's always going to come to the same place. Whereas at the moment it was flapping around because there was no preload. So let me put the needle on and see how we get on with that. So this is done now, a quarter of a turn of preload. And this is fine, whereas half a turn, half a turn of preload, and it was um, still like a bit sticky and locky. So obviously you can't put too much preload on it. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. And that so if you need to take it back out again, you know, like when you do it around there, so you get the there's a hole there, and you can drop your toothpick in there and that'll lock your preload and you can undo that and take it out and it's still got the same preload on it. So when you when you put put your little pin in, make sure that this hole is down here past, past the nine o'clock position. So that, so, so there's obviously, and then you can put your, your pin in there, look, and you've locked it. If you, if you do it, with, if you have that hole further up, then when you try and put this pin through, it's going to hit the rack. Whereas, because this is now below the, this hole is now below the rack. If it was up there, it'd be sort of against the rack. You want to put it there, and then you can drop it straight through, and then you can unscrew your two screws and take it out. And change your preload compared to how you are now. Okay, that feels even better, and that's got one. That's one. One more hole, uh, less preload, so it's not even quarter of a t quarter of a preload on that. That feels lovely, but obviously I don't quite know what the needle's going to do yet, so I need to pop pop that back together again and test it out. So let's do that now. About this one, I think this is about the right tension. So we put that on. We then put a face on. Again, it doesn't matter where the face is because we can adjust that. What's really important now is we put the needle on, and I will need both hands for that. I need to put this that needle on and push it on. So let me do that. I need to make sure it's at uh, dead upright, and, uh, and then I'll gently push put it. The dial on. on. I mean, this this doesn't matter. This is this doesn't have to be in the right place because we can adjust that. But just as an example, before we put the tap on, to tell just just to test that you've got this set up right, you should be able to move your needle, or can it flicks back? If it doesn't flick back. You haven't got any preload. So that is the slack in the system. So if you, there we are, that's fine now. I'll, I've got a fairly good feeling that that's gonna work. Okay, so that's on, I've put the cap on, I've put this on, and um, look, when you just put a little bit of pressure on, you get that up to the zero. But that's, the point is, the test is you put it in, look, and that needle is always hitting the same spot as before it would be moving around. So you got the preload right. So that was a quarter of a turn, if, you're gonna, if you've got the same model as this. I mean, you can go more, I presume, but yeah, look. So, you have done it. You've taken a set of uh, vernier calipers, uh, completely serviced them, cleaned them, preset set the preload, and uh, yeah, well done. You can do it. Yeah. If you like this video and it's been helpful, please give me a, a thumbs up.
If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down and tell me why. Thanks very much.